Welcome to Getting APIs to Work. In today's episode, we'll talk about semantic versioning. What is semantic versioning? It's a specific way how to manage versioning of software artifacts and APIs more specifically. And it's called semantic versioning because there are meanings attached to the version number. Semantic versioning is pretty popular because it's useful to manage versioning that way. If you look at the specification, I'll link it from the description, um, you'll find that it's available in many different languages. So it's really something that has become very popular. And whenever it comes to API management and API versioning and how do I deal with me changing the API while others are using the API, that's something that I strongly recommend. Semantic versioning is just the versioning scheme. I'll talk about it in more detail in a minute. But before we do that, I would like to point out that there's more to versioning than just using the numbers in a specific way. So I'll talk about how to do API versioning more specifically in an upcoming video. And I'll also talk about how to design APIs for extensibility and evolvability in yet another video. So those three videos together, so to speak, are a little serious about how to manage APIs so that you can continue evolving them without creating too much disruption. Okay, now let's look into semantic versioning. It's really simple when you look at what it actually does. It tells you that versioning happens by assigning version numbers. Those version numbers have three different parts. One is patch, one is minor, one is major. Let's go through them. The patch part is the one that just means that you did something to the code, but the API doesn't really change. So typical examples for the patch number increasing would be you fix a bug or you make a performance improvement, all these kind of things that shouldn't be visible to consumers of the API, but that still are a change of the API product. The next part is the minor version number. The minor version number is something that you increase when you make a backwards compatible change. And that is really important. This means that you change something without breaking anybody. And that's really the magic of API versioning, trying to always make those backwards compatible changes so that consumers of the API can continue consuming it without having to do anything. Now, Occasionally, you might run into a situation where you do have to make breaking changes. And in that case, you increment the major version number, which means this is a breaking change. Somebody using the API has to look at what changed and they have to probably fix their code to now be able to deal with the new way how the API works. So you really want to minimize those major version changes because these are disrupting to consumers and that's something that you want to avoid. And that's pretty much all there is to semantic versioning. Really, it's this idea of managing your versions in a way that clearly signals when the implementation changed, the inter interface changed in a backwards compatible way, or there was a breaking change. Now, as I said, I will talk about this in upcoming videos in more detail when it comes to how to design APIs for this and how to manage APIs around this idea. But I would like to point out one last thing. So semantic versioning really depends on this idea of backwards compatible changes being a good thing because then consumers don't have to make changes unless they want to. They want to check out what happened. But this idea of backwards compatibility is something that has to be taken with a grain of salt. And what I would like to point you to here is Hiram's Law. Hiram's Law, I think, is really interesting. It's named after Hiram Wright. He's a software developer with Google. I, I met him last year. He's a really super nice guy. And his, his law, or what he said, and he didn't name the law, but what he said is that any observable behavior of a software component will be dependent upon eventually. So that means Let's say you always serve names ordered in your API. You return a list of names in your API and it's always ordered. That is not something that you've promised in the API, but that is just what your implementation does. 
over time, some people will just assume it's ordered even though you never said it will be ordered. Meaning that if you now change the API and it doesn't return ordered results anymore, somebody's code will break. And you could, you could tell them you should never have depended on that because I never said it's ordered, but it still breaks and you have to deal with that. So Hiram's law really is something important, I think, to take into account in particular for partner and public APIs when you probably will have a large number of consumers and you want to make them as happy as possible and you want to avoid breaking them as much as possible. And there's one good method that I, I call hiramizing. And hiramizing means that when you have certain test environments or test cases for your API, then make sure that they randomize things in a certain way. So for example, even though maybe your database always returns the names ordered from my previous example, have a test environment where occasionally they get ordered the other way around or they get randomized so that people do not depend on those things. And also if you have extension points, make sure that from time to time those extension points actually get used. So there is a new attribute showing up and code will have to deal with that. If you add these aspects of hiramization into your test environments and into the way how people start using your API, then you can avoid problems later on when you make changes that in theory are backwards compatible, but in practice may lead to problems because of Hiram's law. So that was just a little hint in the end that even though semantic versioning is very useful, and I think you should use it. There are some things that might trip you up. Be aware of those and then it will be even more useful for you and your consumers. So that was it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and make sure to subscribe. Like I said, my next videos will be about API management with regards to versioning and also API design, how to design APIs for extensibility and evolvability. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Bye.